Welcome to the 2019 edition of the Top 10 for Summer Reading, brought to you by me, Mrs. Abdul. I'm going to talk about all of these fabulous books in just a minute, but first I want to remind you of the website, Albany High School Summer Reading .com. This is the site where you'll find everything from extra journal article, uh, extra journal assignment pages if you need them, to recommendations for where to find your books. So let's get started. The first is one of two graphic novels that I have on my list. It's called Bloom, and it features a character named Ari, short, short for Aristotle. And he is has always grown up in his family's bakery, except the bakery is starting to fail, and Ari really wants to go on tour with his band. So in order to do that, he has to interview somebody as his replacement. And that's where he meets Hector. Their relationship kind of blooms and blossoms over a little bit of time. And Ari starts to realize that leaving the family bakery might not be exactly what he wanted. Yes, he hated it, but seeing Hector's love of baking has kind of given him a newfound uh, perspective on his family's business. The second book is a graphic novel series called Miss Marvel, because who doesn't want to be a superhero? Uh, Miss Marvel is uh, Kamala Khan. She is growing up in New Jersey as a Muslim American who has the powers to embiggen, which means things like her fists getting large in order to beat up the uh, bad guys, as well as the able to extend her body in order to leap over buildings. So yes, she is an obedient daughter by day, but in the middle of the night, she is beating up the bad guys. So it's about the two lives that she leads as she realizes her superpowers. The next book is Lou, and Lou is the fourth and last book in the track series by Jason Reynolds. You'll see Ghost, Patina, and Sunny also on the screen. Any one of those is fantastic. And it actually follows the Defenders, which is a track team. Uh, Lou is the last character that we meet. Lou is an African-American with albinism. And he is starting to realize a lot about his father's past that was not really that good. And the interactions that uh, Lou's father had with Lou's coach. And so they really have a come to term um moment about what ended up happening between Lou's dad and the coach. And Lou kind of understands all of the decisions that his father has made up to the point in Lou's life where he is co-captain of the Defenders team. So a really awesome uh, series that has a little bit to do with sports, but each book features a strong character. The next book is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. She was uh, the author of The Poet X, which won a bunch of awards uh, just recently. If you are in the culinary arts or love cooking, this is one of the books that you will not want to miss. Amani is going to a uh, magnet school in the city and is a teen mom. She's going into her senior year and there is a new culinary program that now exists and she decides to take on the course. At the end of the course, she has the opportunity to travel to Spain to cook. She doesn't know if she's going to be able to swing the finances, especially raising a young daughter and living with her abuela. Uh, but ultimately, the dream is realized, and it's about what she experiences when she is in Spain. Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam. This one is a fantastic story that features Darius as the main character. Darius has depression and is feeling ostracized in his family, in part because of the dep depression that he and his father share but also that a lot of his culture, his Persian culture, has not really been ingrained in him. His younger sister can speak fluently, and he cannot. And now they have the opportunity to travel to Iran uh, because the grandfather is dying. And so it's when he meets Sarab and playing football that he starts to understand more about his heritage as they travel abroad and understand the differences between being raised in the United States and living in Iran. The next one is The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by Ben, ben Philippe. Now, this is a fantastic book because Ben himself, Philippe, is a black French Canadian, and the main character is a black French Canadian. Norris has no choice but to move to Austin, Texas, to follow his mother's job after his parents split up. His father has essentially moved on, has a new baby and a new wife, and has left Norris to struggle in the super hot sweltering heat of Austin, Texas, and he already has a sweating problem anyway. Uh, so what he decides to do is create this field guide, this diary of all of the ridiculous things that American teenagers do say and how they interact, and decidedly uh, falls in love with a girl that he didn't think that he was actually interested in just because generally he hates most people. 
Proud uh, by Ibtihaj Muhammad. This is one of the nonfiction books on my list, and it's also a biography. Uh, both of these are essentially the same book. On the left, you have My Fight for an Unlikely American Dream, and on the right, Living My American Dream. One of them is the adult version, and then she wrote a young adult version as well. You can pick up either one of them. I highly recommend them both. Um, and if you remember, Ibtihaj Muhammad was the first American, Black Muslim American, to uh, compete wearing a hijab. She was a fencer that placed second in the Rio Olympics. And this is about her struggles growing up in New Jersey, the racism she experienced in a predominantly or stereotypically white sport, um, and also her perseverance, and then the fact that she wanted some very fancy outfits that went well with her hijab, and so she started her own fashion line to boot. The next book is Shout by Lori Hulse Anderson, and this is another biography, but it's also an interesting take because it's written in verse, kind of like poetry. Um, and Shout is Anderson's own biography. If you remember 20 years ago, she wrote the, a book called Speak, in which Melinda was uh, raped in between her eighth and ninth grade year and becomes ostracized in school. Well, Shout tells you the story of Anderson's own sexual assault and the experiences that have left her uh, angry and uh, willing to fight for the rights of the Me Too during the Me Too movement of women and girls in order to speak out against sexual assault. It is fierce. It is powerful. Um, there are several pages that you could just read and reread uh, because of the powerful uh, statements that she makes. The next one is Rising Water, the story of the Thai cave rescue by Mark Aronson. Now, this incident, the Thai cave re rescue, happened June 23rd, 2018, literally a year ago. And Aronson, immediately after the rescue of the boys and their coach, decided to start writing this book. Now, everybody knows how the story actually ended. And yet you are still on the edge of your seat as you're reading this story called Rising Water. It is about the rescue endeavors that had to take place as the 12 boys from the soccer team, the wild boars, went into the cave and then couldn't get back out because of the rising water. It is absolutely breathtaking at how Aronson is able to sh like put you in the cave and the rescue, and to really understand all that went into working together uh, in order to rescue the boys and their coach. And then the last one is The 57 Bus by Dashka Slater. Those of you that have been around the library in the last couple of weeks have uh, known that Dashka Slater visited us, and we are super excited to continue to have these conversations and to read this book. This is about a 2013 incident in which Richard was a black student on the 57 bus home from his school, and Sasha was uh, a transgender student on the bus, also the 57 bus on the way home from their school. Sasha had fallen asleep, and Richard, with a group of his friends, decided to light Sasha's skirt on fire. So it is about uh, the fire itself and the justice system and how it treated the two um, of them after this true story in 2013. So that was my top 10. Uh, be sure to follow us on social media, the library Twitter handle, Facebook, or Instagram in order to get more recommendations and see what we're up to over the summer. Remember that the locations that you can find some of the books at include our own library, uh, will be open during summer school hours. You've got the public library, and you can also download via Overdrive, or if you're interested, purchasing the books at local stores like the Bookhouse of Stuyvesant Plaza on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. So go ahead and get reading. Remember the website, Albany High School, summerreading.weebly. We hope you enjoy.